Report. Good morning and God bless. Welcome to Hope and the Truth. We have a surprise for you today. I'm Lance Parvin. With me, Lance Daniels from Rolling with Faith. William Calabrese from just on every show. All right. We're here to talk about the Lord today. And uh, the topic that's on my heart is 100% in. 100% in. We're going to discuss what this means. Thank you guys for coming to the show. Sure, sure. Joining us on your, on your Sunday. I'm going to read a basic, uh, real quick scripture, real quick. It's uh, Matthew. Uh, where are we at? It is 1243. Let me find this. Here we go. When an evil spirit leaves a person, it goes into the desert, seeking rest but finding none. Then it says, I will return to the person I came from. So it returns and finds its former home empty, swept, and in order. Then the spirit finds seven other spirits more evil than itself, and they all enter the person and live there. And so that person is worse off than before. That will be the experience of this evil generation. And that's... Uh, interesting scripture. A lot of people have talked about this before. Um, wherever someone's faith is at in regards to what's dwelling inside of them, uh, the way that I've always taken this is that, you know, sometimes we, we battle spirits, principalities, not with each other. Only there's a war going on with each other. It's not so much that. Uh, there's other entities, let's just say that, that influence behavior, and it throws us off over time. Uh, what this is stating is that, you know, it's not enough to, let's say, clean up your life. Let's say stop doing sin. People say, oh, I'm not sinning anymore. You'll notice sometimes people take a backslide, but that's a severe backslide, which is almost like the, the, the last part of man is worse than the first. Um, but one of the things, is, if you're trying to improve your life and change things, you know, read God's Word. Accept Christ. Embrace the Holy Spirit. And that's what makes a complete change. Because if something, if a house is swept clean, it means it's empty. The Spirit can come right back in. So if Jesus isn't dwelling in you, what is? Right? That's kind of the way that I uh, I take that. What do you feel, Mr.? Uh? Well, whatever wants to dwell in you. If you're, if you're not aware of your spiritual self, then you're just up in the air. The, the, the principalities and powers that exist in this dimension are inhabiting you, are, are inspiring you, are causing your actions. If you cast out these evil spirits, which, first of all, if you deny they exist, you're lost. You got to find yourself. But if you know they're there and cast them out, that's the first step. And accept Christ. That's the second. But the third one is to live by His laws and rules. It's not going to stay clean. It's not going to stay swept out, as Lance said, if you don't follow Jesus' doctrine, which is very simple. It's not a, a, a hard, you know, people think, well, I, I don't want to turn to Jesus because it's too much work. I got to do too much. You don't got to do anything. You got to do what the guy on the next cross did, who was a bum, was killed for. It. But what did he say? He said, "I I believe that you're the Lord. Uh, remember me when you're in your your heaven." And he said, "You're going with me." That's how hard it is to accept Christ and go with Him. But go with Him. Go with Him in your actions. Go with Him in your thoughts. Go with Him, and He's going to make life wonderful for you. It's going to be a life of blessings as opposed to choosing a life of curses. And that's about sweeping that house. <laughs> I like that. You actually raise a good point is that I think a lot of people identify Christ. But how many people actually follow him, which would be true belief? It's like, like I, I know Jesus. You ask someone, it's like, no, I know Jesus. There's a very difference in how that's that, that put in the context. And so I think a lot of people have overcomplicated what they think following is. They're like, well, I don't want to you know, listen to this or that. And I go, it's basic. It's very, very basic. Jesus gave us a few things. There were two main commandments he gave. Love your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. And it's funny how so many people claim that they follow the Lord, and they break both of those things all the time. And that's the key thing. It's like, if you're going to tell someone that you have hope, and you have faith, and you're following the Lord, and you're walking around miserable, it's like, well, who wants that? That's not how you're going to, you're not filled with the Holy Spirit. You're walking around like, oh, this, this day, get me out of here. You're trying to help sow that seed to others. I mean, everyone on, on this panel right now has a testimony. They've, they've heard it a million times. They're going to hear it more. But, you know, we all got to a point, I think LD would agree with me on this, where you, you, you get broken. You get to that point, it's like, yeah, I, I, that's it. Because we still think if we have a contingency plan, I'm doing something until everything's wiped out. It's like losing something in a natural disaster. You're not like, well, I can't call the insurance. I've got nothing else. All right, Lord, here I am. And you want to tell people, go to him first. Don't wait until it gets to that point and go, okay, I got it. And that's really the message that 
we try to put out there is sow that seed and you know learn for yourself it's not so much where you have to listen to someone else and that's your relationship with the lord you need a relationship with the lord it's always good to fellowship and talk to other people but you need to go to him directly yourself ld well basically i look at it like this if you've been doing stuff your way for years and nothing didn't change you might as well just follow the lord give him a try you know see where did where would it take you because like me, life experience, I always did it my way. You know, no, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it from my mother. She's a pastor. I don't want to hear it from this minister. I'm going to do it my way because in my mind, I'm doing everything right. You know, um, I treat people right. I, I respect my elders and everything. So in my mind, I'm thinking, I'm doing everything right. So why is not happening? Because I'm not really following Jesus because... I'm thinking that being that I'm respectful, I'm not stealing, I'm not cussing nobody out, nothing like that. I'm, well, why shouldn't I be blessed? You know what I mean? But I'm not following him. So now, being that I'm taking a route to follow God, oh, man, it's amazing. Everything just happening right because I'm devoting myself to God 100%. Yeah, that's, that's a big surprise. That's a big surprise. It was a shocker for me. Yes. Yeah. The last, the last, I mean, the revelation we came up, by the way, we were gone for a little while. Uh, the revelation I had last week, when I, you know, it was a 180. People like, you just change your life. I go, no, I listen to the Lord. He tells me, I'm, I just do it right away. And people are looking at you like, how do you do this? And I go, when you get a message, you know it's a message. You know, it's not some dream. It's not make-believe. And it, and it shifts, and you go, okay, my life is yours. I'll listen. Because there's always parts of ourselves that we kind of keep. Like, well, I'm following him this way, but I'm going to do this myself. And it's like, wait a minute. It's like characters hey. in a novel, right? Characters in a novel saying, I know better than the author. No, the author's telling you something, right? The author's telling you something, and you're going to tell the author, well, I think you should write me up here. No, he wrote you a specific way. Follow that. Follow that. But that's not what we do. We, we try to question things. God knows all things. He controls all things. All things happen, right? We're the ones that are stubborn. And we can see a very small part of a story, even our own story. We definitely can't see someone else's story. And we'll look at something and we go, wait a minute. When I let the reins go and give it to him, he's going to guide us in truth. He wrote our lives. Right? When we see that, it changes, it changes everything. It, 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 like Solomon says, it's all vanity. When we think we can solve problems, when we think we're in control, that's vanity. You're living a lie. Let the Holy Spirit come in and control you. Then you'll love your neighbor. You know why? Because you're acting out of God's will. He's running you. He's running things. There is no more animosity. There is no more hatred. It's all about the Holy Spirit indwelling in you in that swept house. And He ain't going to let nobody else in. Nobody can come in. No evil spirit can come in. Because the Lord prevails. It's a kingdom. And you're part of the kingdom. You're a temple in the kingdom. And you have to operate in that fashion. The rest is vanity. LD? Yeah, you know. You know, switching gears a little bit, I, I used to run, you know, from the Lord. And it's like the Holy Spirit because I was afraid what it was going to do when it hit me. Uh, I remember... I was at my mother's house in Florida, and we were all sitting around, and they playing old tapes of us having church, when we had church, when my grandmother was living and everything. And I felt the Holy Spirit coming on. So I said, man, let me, let me get out of here, because something about to happen. And my mother used to always say, well, you need to stop running from the Lord. But I just didn't like what I was feeling because when it comes, you, you don't know what you're going to do. So I said, well, let me get up. I got up and I started walking fast and boom, right in the middle of the floor. You know, I'm a joker. So my uncle, he just thought I was joking. Oh, that boy, that damn Lance, that Lance, that Lance. But my mom said, no, he for real. I'm talking about he hit me so hard, I messed up my knee. Now, we on vacation. I'm down there visiting my mother. And I'm trying to heavy up and walk in the kitchen real fast because God is working with me. God is working with me. And I'm like, I don't like this feeling. So what I'm saying to y'all people, it, I know it's a 
big thing about, you know, people's religion and everything. But you got to try them. You got to try them. I've been running. I've been running. I, I, I kind of stopped going to church because God was working on me. So I, I was dating this girl, and she was a Caucasian girl. And, you know, she come to a black church, and we're in there, and I'm feeling it. And I'm like, I'm like, man, I don't like this feeling. I don't like this feeling. So she's sitting by me, and all of a sudden I bust out. This Caucasian girl, she jumped up, so she was like, what? Where did that come from? So the whole time I'm running from the Lord. I'm running, I'm running. So I said, you know what? I just got to give myself to God. I got to give it to him. And it still hit me. Uh, I'm not going to lie. I, I don't like it because when it hits you, you don't have no control. You don't know where it's going to come from. All of a sudden, bam. And God is real. So what we have right now, oh, we going far, people. We going far. Y'all going to see our face. Y'all going to hear our story. Y'all going to hear our message. We have a message not to just tell some of y'all, but tell the world. Because y'all need to hear this. Y'all need to hear this. You know, we've been doing it our way for years. And guess what? It hasn't been working. So why not? Just follow the Lord. See where it takes. I like that message. That's because it's Jesus' message. It doesn't have to be our message. I like that. I feel it. Right. I got more. We're going to stay on this topic. Matthew. Sounds like Matthew. Uh, 1037. If you love your father or mother more than you love me, you are not worthy of being mine. Or if you love your son or daughter more than me, you are not worthy of being mine. If you refuse to take up your cross and follow me, you are not worthy of being mine. If you cling to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for me, you will find it. Now again, some people hear that and they go, that's just mean. And it's like you have to understand the context of what he's saying. When you put the Lord first in your life, it doesn't mean you don't love your children, you love yourself. It means you're not going to be swayed. Because believe me, when you're doing the right thing, everyone will come against you. The world, who you thought were your friends, and you'll say, so what? Let the redeemed say so. You're here to help people and to serve others, not serve yourself. And by giving up your life in a way, your lifestyle perhaps, maybe it's not about collecting cars, collecting houses, collecting whatever, and you start seeing, well, you know what, this person needs something, maybe I can give them something from me. That's now taking up your cross. It might be uncomfortable. Listen, if you would have told me, Lance, you're going to be on TV preaching, I'm just like laughing. <laughs> I'd be like, who are you? And what are you doing? <laughs> but to see how my life is coming, people say, that no, you've changed. And it's not some act. They go, that's not an act. Uh, you see enough stuff and you go, I got the message. I, I got the message. Again, sometimes we have to get a few lumps on our head yeah. over time. And when you're tired of getting lumps, you go, now I will listen. But it's tough to communicate this to people because I know... No one is at a point now where they're like, I'm lost. You're not lost. People would have told me, they looked at him like, that guy? No, there's no, I've had pastors tell me, they're like, have anyone? You would have been the one we thought were going to hell. <laughs> and so they're looking down and they go, you know what? I'm glad we didn't say that because you could see right. how the Spirit's working That's in right. someone's life. It's not, he tells us not to judge for a specific reason because he knows better than we do. Sir? That's right. I mean, <laughs> what we want to do is just, promote and, and perpetrate the truth and that's all I know to do I'm not a preacher I, I'm, I'm amazed that I'm sitting here with these two gentlemen but the Lord he's amazing everything he does is amazing and once the Holy Spirit takes over it's not like you're going to be burdened with a lot of rules and this and that you're going to be your life's going to become easier the blessings are going to fall where they're supposed to and you know you're going to be better for your children better for everyone around you I mean We've been lied to long enough. Look at the, the picture that they depict of Jesus. That's not Jesus. That's, that's one of the uh, noble families that took over Rome, the Borgias. And they commissioned Leonardo da Vinci to do the picture of Jesus. Well, guess who he painted for you? That's his homosexual partner, one of the Borgias. So we've got to unwind a lot of these lies that have been put out there to dissuade us from loving the Lord. Let the Holy Spirit in. He's going to educate you. He's educating me. I'm finding out things I never dreamed of were true. The, the whole world is a lie. Yes. <laughs> Let all men be liars. Let God's word be true. And that's what we tell you. Don't listen to us. Seek him yourself. That's the best advice that I could ever give another person. When I was hearing people, when I grew up, I didn't know up from down. I was like, what's this and that? And, and the key thing is, 
then you start looking into the one thing that you've gotten away from. It's the one thing I never looked at was the Bible. Because I would go to church when I was young, and I, they'd be singing, and I'd be like, what's going on? I'm, I'm falling asleep over here. <laughs> and then when I went myself and started looking into the Word of God, and I've heard all the excuses. Well, you know, they changed words. And you know, that, now, let me tell you something. It's spiritually discerned. You could pluralize and lowercase stuff all you want. You could change names. He's going to give it to you because he's, he's searching our hearts to see where he's going to dwell. The hubris of man to think you can undo what God said is going to happen is hilarious at best. So if you go in, because again, I'm dumb. So the fact that I went in here and he starts, and I kept on reading it and reading, well, Lance, what are you doing? I'm reading the Bible. No, really, what are you doing? I'm reading the Bible. I'm not going, to, I'm not going out. I'm reading the Bible. And I kept on reading it. And the more that I'm reading it, the more stuff is being shown to me. And I keep on reading it. It's like, well, you know, when you look at the disciples, they went through a process, right? You know, he called on Matthew, you know, follow me. They dropped what they were doing. Follow. He didn't say they didn't make mistakes. So they were cursing. They were swearing. Uh, Matthew denied him. He denied him when he was uh, being crucified. He was about to be crucified. He goes, I don't know the man. Three times. He realized what he did, and he repented. So we make mistakes during this process. It is a process of growth. But a person can be saved today. How do I know that? Jesus said it. He said, you're not promised tomorrow. We have today. So when you take scripture in and of itself, I don't need to misinterpret anything. His words are right here. So the topic of what you got into 100% in, and this is the key thing, you cannot bridge a gap. Not one of us here or anyone else can bridge a gap between this world and heaven. Don't think we can take the things of the world and not, not when it comes in. No, because that's us trying to mingle things. I know all about that, right? There's a reason Revelation states, right? What is it? Uh, 315. When, when God says, Jesus actually says, I will, because you are neither hot nor cold, but lukewarm, I will spew you out of my mouth. And that's the key thing. It's like lukewarm because it's black and white. Faith is black and white. There's no in-between. And even though we learn each day as we go on, you start to see very quickly, there is no neutral. You're either for or against. That's the key thing. You can't be, well, I, I love the Lord, but I enjoy lying. Well, guess what? That, you just answered your own question itself. And, you know, these are the, the, the key things of, about a refining fire that's coming. And in some people, it's been in our lives. We go through stuff. Why? To purge the things that we don't need. Because we're stubborn. We'll hold on to some stuff and I'll be like, I don't want to get rid of this. We're walking around with like, you know, two tons of luggage. And he's like, let it go. Take my yoke. It's like, no, I still want to hold this. We can let it go. He came to, to give us life and life more abundantly. And that is liberty. It's spiritual liberty. That's where you can be in this place and be free. You don't have to wait. People are walking around miserable. I need to get out of here and go to the kingdom. The kingdom's here. It's here, but you need to accept it. You need to let him in your life. If you're keeping him out at arm's length saying, well, I'll take a little bit, but I still want to hold on to this, that's the problem. 100% in. 100% in. LD. So I look at it like this. This is saying, our life is already written out. So only thing we have to do is fulfill it. So we have a choice to make a left, we have a choice to make a right, we have a choice to go forward, we have a choice to go back. So, you didn't try it left, you didn't try it forward, evidently you didn't try it right and forward. So why don't you go forward and why don't you go right? Because our life is already written out. He already know what we're going to do. Well, if Lance take this left, he going to have these problems. Lance. Go backwards, oh, he's going to have major problems. You know, so now I'm taking the right road. I'm going forward. Like I said, I, I'm, not, I'm not sitting here saying uh, I'm not scared. I, I'm scared because I don't know what the Holy Ghost is going to do. Because when it hits you, you have no control of it. You, you have no control. You know, you think that I want to catch the Holy Ghost out in public? No. So God, God is using me, and you know, I'm, I'm scared because I don't want to try to run and then break something, like on my body and stuff like that. So I said, okay, I'll follow, follow God and everything because I've been doing so many things the wrong way. I'm like, let me try it the right way. And this is all new to me. This is all new to me. Uh, 
I, I never was the faithful type of guy. You know, I'm, I'm a nice looking guy. So I was able to get this girl and get that girl and everything. So I didn't know what it feel like to be 100% faithful. But now being that, you know, God is around me and I want to do the right thing. I'm like being so faithful and committed and everything. And it's a good feeling, you know. I don't have to lie. I don't have to cover up a lie. Because everything I'm telling is the truth. I'm not lying about nothing. And this is new because when I get off work, I go home, I'm in the house. I'm not out looking for this girl or going over this girl house. This is all new to me. Like I said, I like it. It's all new. I'm scared because I just don't know how God is going to hit me. But I know as long as I continue to follow God and follow the word and do as his will, he's just going to flood the gates open for all of us. Father, just watch. Just keep watching us, and you'll see how far we get. Trust me, we're going to get far. Y'all going to be amazed. But y'all just keep watching us, keep following us. You go, Billy. Well, it's just time for us to decide who's your daddy. <laughs> who's your daddy? Is it Satan who wants to kill, steal, and destroy you? Or is it the Lord, our Heavenly Father, who sent His Son be sacrificed to save us. We got to follow one or the other. It's like the tares and the wheat time. We're being separated. I'm sure everybody can feel it that's listening to this. Everybody I talk to can feel it, but they don't know what's going on. You know what's going on? The shaking, the separation. Who's your daddy? <laughs> I'm going to leave you one last thing. I can't even top that. It's from Revelation. And remember this. Keep this in mind. Like I said, when people don't understand the word, you can, it will be discerned when you go with a pure heart and you truly want to understand this. God blesses the one who reads the words of this prophecy to the church. And he blesses all who listen to its message and obey what it says, for the time is near. And keep something in mind. In mind. Prophecy is what God's going to do. Not what we think is going to happen. It's what he's going to do. I'm going to thank you guys for coming around. This is fun. We're going to do this again, probably quite often. Um, Lance Daniels, William Calabrese. I'm Lance Parvin. We'll see you next time on Open the Truth. Give your life to Jesus Christ.